And now, for two minutes on behalf of the EFDD, Diane James, please. Thank you, sir. An aspect of the logic and coherency of the European Union's migration policy and resettlement programme is in the spotlight, in that we now have to deal with the direct consequences of Mrs Merkel's siren call to anyone which has delivered unforeseen numbers seeking a home and a future within the European Union. Now, while some of those may be genuine asylum seekers or refugees, not yet identifiable and confirmable is those that are masquerading as such. Now, dictated quotas, unreasonable deadlines and relaxed processing systems to resolve the resettlement logjam have only exacerbated the problems caused by Mrs Merkel's ill-judged siren call. And the United Kingdom media and press has covered the instances of German and Swedish communities overwhelmed by resettled migrants with stories of arson, street violence and increasing crime levels. And in my own southeast region in the United Kingdom, the proposed forced settlement of 200 migrants near to Chichester is viewed with fear, apprehension and trust. And that's totally understandable from a community of only purportedly 197 people. Now, the importance of national and citizen consent should be paramount, not overridden or ignored by European Union forced numbers in position, a dictatorial policy and an ill-considered ultimate control over asylum and refugee resettlement. Now, where detention or force has happened, it is because the level of pressure has become more than a member state can bear or tolerate. The European Union needs to learn from its mistakes and also change direction completely. If you want newcomers to be welcomed, to smooth the process of acceptance and reintegration, stop the community backlash and halt the instances of violence, then stop immediately behaving like a dictator, tell Mrs Merkel to rescind her siren call and retract the freedom of movement principle. It's called getting a grip of the problem. Much. Thank you. Thank you.